So welcome to Garden Indonesia. Uh, today we will talking with uh, Dr. Wiwahono and Deti Wulandar. I would like to invite uh, each of the speaker to to explain or to describe uh, about their own collection. So probably I can start with you because we is of actually uh, is my or our. MAG advisor in 2019 and also at that time we also came together in Ars Electronica 14th uh, anniversary before pandemic we are quite lucky yeah, we, <laughs> to be there directly and getting crazy and meet many people there so you you know exactly what is the festival itself there so so now I drag him to tell more about his collection. Um, 2006, 2007, uh, I bought my first digital artworks. So moving image, a still image, and later on animation, digital animation, and so forth. So my collected, my collection, uh, in my collection, I have uh, sound art, bio art, which is uh, artwork made of living organism and <clears throat> uh, light art and immaterial art. I bought something that I don't get anything. Uh, I collect uh, co uh, installation. I collect uh, yeah, audio visual installation also. And yeah, this kind of artworks is my focus <clears throat> since uh, around 15 years now. I actually started collecting um, art works or art pieces um, only recently compared to Matsuyu mm -hmm. because I've started in 2007, 2016 or 2017. Um, however, um, I am very close uh, with the art scene because most of my friends are artists and because my background before was in digital agency, I was a creative director and I got to, um, well, I was involved in this uh, quite a few international um, tech events where I actually invited Vensa twice to perform uh, and um, exhibit his installations also as speaker. First of all, I would like to continue uh, what Daddy has said. So in, uh, we have, especially in Bandung, a lot of artists since certainly more than a decade who did a lot of uh, animation for international companies. Mm. Yeah. So they are sitting in Bandung and yeah, they got the job sent via internet. And after the job is done, they send back. So uh, for a lot of digital artists in Indonesia, NFT is not something uh, uh, like a breakthrough. Yeah. So we will talk about it later. Yeah. So I think it's a natural for Deti and me uh, to start collecting digital uh, NFT in Indonesia. But about the basic. So I would like to start uh, uh, sharing uh, the knowledge when I uh, started collecting or I wanted to start, uh, to collect NFT I uh, I was quite confused because of a lot of terms uh, that's why uh, I think I start with explaining some basic uh, information right so we know that Singapore has a Singapore dollar as a currency. The United States uh, has a yeah, United uh, US dollar and UK has a uh, uh, pound sterling, Indonesian has rupiah, right? So in 2008, uh, someone called uh, Satoshi Nakamoto introduced Bitcoin, which is a currency, a new currency, but without any country. And there is also no printed paper notes, but bank note, and no coin, nothing at all. So he started to sell the Bitcoin. The problem was actually 
if I would buy a Bitcoin from him for, let's say, I don't know, $50, 50 US dollar, so I don't get anything, right? Because there is no bank note and there is no coin. So he could only sell his Bitcoin if he can have a data recorded in a hard disk in a database which will remain forever in the database. That means just like our hard disk in our computer, we, we, we save some data in the, in the hard disk, but then the next day we don't like it and then we can delete. But the hard disk or the database developed by Satoshi is called blockchain. So in the moment he writes something into the blockchain, no one can delete anymore forever right that is the difference between the normal uh, database and the blockchain by doing it the bitcoin can be resale because every time you sell the bitcoin it is recorded in the blockchain which is then also encrypted now with some code by writing it into the blockchain. So that's why the word cryptocurrency, crypto it comes from cryptography. It's mean with secret. So it was safe in the blockchain with secret. And yeah, that was the start. Later on, <clears throat> uh, people introduced the non-fungible token, which is actually a lot of people ask me, what is token, right? Mm -hmm. Token is a case sensitive, uh, alphanumeric so zero to nine and abc until z in small letter and abc until z in capital letter this combination of uh, case sensitive alphanumeric is actually the token because the combination the number of combination is so huge yeah that the token is unique there is only one token in that combination. So therefore, you can tokenize everything you want in this world. And no other thing which is tokenized has the same token. Yeah, this, this is actually uh, the start using the NFT. The largest to uh, the largest uh, cryptocurrency at the moment is Bitcoin, and then there is uh, the second largest in Ethereum. So in NFT business, people is using mostly Ethereum, and uh, yeah, there is uh, another currency ranking. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, last time I checked, fifty four, which is the Tezos, right? So uh, that is actually the the start. So then digital artists started to realize that the, their still image and their moving image can be tokenized and then they can secure it into the blockchain and they can sell it because the owner of this token is the, yeah, the rightful owner and because the transaction is recorded in the blockchain. The ownership is also secured. Right? It's a transparent uh, mechanism, data that everybody can see, but not the name of you and Daddy and Mona, but uh, the buyers and the seller also get tokenized. Right? So token A sell to token B today, 18 of August, 2021, uh, 8 p.m., uh, 0, 05 minutes and 20 seconds, let's say like that, and selling an NFT app with certain token. Yeah, transparent mean only the transaction is transparent, but the person is not. Yeah, so that's actually, I think, uh, the very basic information about uh, <clears throat> yeah uh, NFT or 
why it has become so interesting. For me, who has collected digital art since almost 15 years now, the still image and the moving image that I have collected before and what appears now in the NFT platform or NFT market is there is no different at all. I have collected Om Leo, a very interesting Indonesian uh, digital artist, seven, eight years ago. The, the difference is only back then I bought the artwork without token. And today, the same artwork is sold with token, which is important for those who are into the commercial issue who see the collection as an asset class, right? And for me, I am a kind of collector who is anti-market. I'm not into commercial value at all. For me, it doesn't matter whether I buy a digital art, moving image or non-moving image, still image with token or without token. For me, NFT is not so that kind of NFT art is not a breakthrough at all, only for people who want to get something secure by spending the money to buy digital art. NFT is a breakthrough. Okay. Yeah. So we will talk about later about the NFT art, which is actually the real fascinating <laughs> NFT art. So, yeah. okay. Yeah, so, uh, it's a very interesting. That's why you, for twenty years, you are in in Germany. You also teaching because what you share is very, very uh, uh, good for a people who who want to know uh, uh, basic knowledge about uh, NFT. So thank you. Ian. So I will go direct to Daddy. Uh, you want to add something related with the with the Wii U explanation? It will be interesting if we got. Uh, your perspective about this. Okay. Um, I think uh, we're speaking about NFT and its relation to art, right? Um, uh, since it is, it's a, it's a technology that I, I find rev revolution, revolutionary. Yeah, that's the word. Because not not in not in the way how how the visuals uh, are being explored or being presented. Not uh, we're not talking about just still images or moving images, but it's what happens in the um, ecosystem. I think is more like it because with now with NFT, what what can be done is that for, I know that some early, well, okay, early collectors of what we, what we now call NFT art is actually the uh, crypto players, right? So they bought stuff for investments, but now there are new, there, there are also new type of collectors that also like maybe the visuals or how the art um, artworks are being presented, um, yet also uh, feel that by buying these artworks, they can also support the artists. Supporting in this case, uh, meaning that yes, at some point you have to sell what you have in your collections again, because by doing so, um, artists will get royalties. Right, so whenever the artworks move around, um, artists will get compensated, and that is something that is not happening in the conventional art world. Uh, that's why I think it's yeah the this what's what's happening now is revolutionary. Also, because what's happening is it it's also a revolution in terms of uh, institutions. Um, the blockchain technology that's being used um, for NFTs, right? It cuts the middleman. So now artists can sell um, straight to the collectors. Um, 
we're going to talk about what's happening in the ecosystem because it's it's actually very um, interesting and exciting. Be, um, since I'm active in the community, we're going to talk about that maybe later. Um, why why I find it interesting. Um, so yeah, I think it's not um, NFT art is not just it it doesn't stop right there in the visual or the audio or uh, whatever that we see, right? Because um, there are also NFT art out there that actually um, presents you with experience, you know? So it's not, it's not what we see visually, but it's actually the experience, um, which yeah, I have something like that in my collection that, that yes, I'm supposed to be experiencing this in four months time, basically. So there, there, there is something like that too. So I know that people thought, um, well, NFT art is just like that, you know, visual, audio, visuals, or, you know, moving images, but it's not, it's not about, it's not that, it's not only about that. Yeah. So, yeah, so. I, I, I fully agree. The majority of the NFT artworks that we see in the uh, platforms, uh, they are actually, well, I would say not amazing. I mean, it doesn't justify why I think in the future, NFT will be the art in very near future. Right? So I, I all have already discussed with my friends about uh, probably contemporary art has ended with the formation of NFT. In, I mean, later on, we will see in the art, in the art history, uh, global art history, what impact does NFT art has in our world? Probably with the formation of NFT today, contemporary art has, has ended. Right? So because uh, what Detti already uh, give a hint in that direction is you can do with NFT some amazing uh, artworks that you cannot do it with other medium, right? Uh, uh, you just visit uh, async.art website because it, it concentrates in artworks that autonomously change let's say an artwork that has an image another image on daytime compared to the same image on nighttime right or maybe it will change in four different seasons the image will have snow in the winter time and sunshine bright sunshine in summer time so this kind of artworks is not possible to be done in the normal standard digital still or moving image and I find this kind of or uh, the, the the artwork by a map Doc Jones, the replicator, which we know or everybody knows in the digital art, is an amazing artwork with the photocopy copy machines that that create another hundreds of tokens, uh, uh, hundreds of artworks which is tokenized automatically by the computer and so on. I find this artwork amazing compared to the normal still image would cost you much more money. I mean, yeah, if we are selective enough in the NFT artwork, we can build a stunning collection, which is, I think will be considered as the spirit of our time. Yeah, something that other media, not possible to do it. I fully agree with that thing. yeah. So, but uh, as a, uh, beginners like me at that time when i started collecting uh, nft uh, first of all i just bought anything cheap for me just to get an idea how to transfer cryptocurrency to the platform right and then what happens with uh with this and that that was actually my curiosity not about the art itself mm -hmm. but uh, after that and then i could concentrate more in uh, what is fascinating in the in the NFT art world? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I, I would suggest that for those who are interested to 
uh, dive into NFT artworks just buy just buy the first artworks it doesn't need to be uh, the very expensive one just buy one and then you will get this this experience of collecting NFT first yeah so I do I almost do yeah Deti with your help soon <laughs> <laughs> oh that's <Daddy, laughs> your mentor <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. That's why I yeah. invite my mentor. No, I invite you first, and then you become a mentor. Then, so <laughs> yeah, actually, it's, it's it's getting more and more interesting, especially for people who like me who want curious to know. And actually, I want to to not start it NFT because I am afraid about addiction. <laughs> I don't want to have another addiction of NFT because, like we you said, it's cheap, and then you sometimes people will more carefully to pick. The, uh, the the contemporary art work because it's expensive so that's why we really care but with nft it's like la, 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 la. it's like in traditional market you you do is different with the you know but the, the things that i want to know i mean uh respond at the response of your in explanation actually this is still any space for uh what you call uh because when, when I check and I Google or talking with people, it's always a young uh, artist or animation. So there is a place, do you think, for what you call, uh, in a nice way, the classic artist or with the senior one who want to try to, to digging or dive in a an FT world do you think it's still because they did talk about ecosystem and we are talking about the the, the future so and uh, if you don't want to die we do we need to adapt that's why the the, the tema also of mrg21 so what do you think about so is any place for this situation or this person yeah uh well, I believe so. Yes, uh, since it's since we're still in, well, people in the um, NFT space still call it. We're still early, right? So what's gonna happen soon enough is the UI of of um, any Web three website um, is gonna be more friendlier for people. And for those, maybe for us in Indonesia, right? I think the, the first hurdle is actually the language mm. because the steps are not that difficult. Okay. It's the language. The, the, so we have the language barrier because everything is in English, okay. right? Yeah. But I'm sure that in the future, we're gonna have our own, maybe marketplace, um, NFT marketplace that's in our own language. So that's gonna be easy for people. Um, also, um, okay, I'm going to share this story. In the past two weeks or so, I've, I've managed to onboard um, quite a few of our contemporary artists, basically, to the NFT space through Tezos platform. So as Wiyu has mentioned earlier, there are a few types of blockchains, right, for NFTs. Um, the biggest right now is Ethereum blockchain, but there's also Tezos. Why I um, prefer to use Tezos when I introduce NFTs to these artists is because we live in Indonesia and Ethereum, the conversion of Ethereum to rupiahs is like, ah, it's expensive, okay? One Ethereum is like, what, now 47 million rupiahs? But with Tezos, one Tezos is only 47, um, or no, for, yeah, around 45,000 rupiah. So it's cheaper basically because these two blockchains use different uh mechanisms. That's why, um, well, people can Google this basically why Tezos is being called the green block, uh, eco friendly blockchain, and uh, Ethereum hopefully soon uh, will change its mechanism as well to be more eco-friendly. So anyway, um, I've invited a few artists, not really invited, they asked me a lot about NFTs, right? So I just, okay, if you wanna try it, 
let's try it, you know? Um, if all of you are in front of your computers, this is what you need to do. So when you want to uh, go into NFT space as a collector or as artists, what you need to have first, of course, um, you have to have the currency because whatever you do there, uh, whether you want to tokenize your art or whether you want to buy something, of course, you have to have the currency. Then um, where do you buy the currency, right? So you have to know the exchange of where to buy the currency, Tezos or Ethereum. After that, after you buy the currency, you have to set up your own blockchain wallet. Every blockchain have their own wallets. So Tezos has Tezos wallet and then Ethereum has uh, its own um, Ethereum wallet. So you have to set up the wallet. After you set up the wallet, then you, you have to send the currency that you bought from the exchange to your wallet. After that, you just need to sync your wallet to the website, to the marketplace that you're on. So with Tezos, um, there's Hikatnung, uh, which is, Hikatnung is like, um, like a punk kid. Um, well, that's usually a punk analogy because the <laughs> website is like so basic. It has no search feature. You can't search anything in there. Um, but what happens when, you know, I cannot search anything. How do I know how to do this? Where do I find this? And then people would go to social media to ask around. That's when interaction happens. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the, um, I think the most interesting bit um, that I experienced. And um, I let these artists um, experience that themselves. So I taught them how to, yeah, how to buy currency, how to set up wallet, how to browse and how to buy something or mint something. Mm -hmm. I did that in less than two hours. Wow. So less than two hours. Um, so that was like the first two hours I had like three students. And then after eight hours, 12, after a day, 20, and they all, and now they're all tutoring other fellow artists oh, cool. on how to do it. Wow. Yeah. So what 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 I want them, I know that there are like a, some sort of backlash, right? In, in the in, in our in the art scene, some people are like very very an, uh, anti NFT, but I want them to experience. Look, experience this, and then you can decide later if this is for you or not, because this is actually a solution to a, to a problem. If you have a problem and, and, and it helps you solve that problem, why not, yeah. right? So I want, yes, I want them to just try first. And they all loved it. Um, we have Fenza minting his first NFT on Tezos platform on Hikatnong. So Masri, you, you should collect Fenza. It's very cheap. It's only 1.7845 Tezos. I'm the, first, I'm the first collector of uh, House of Natural Fiber. 10 years, yes. I think 10 years ago or 12, 12 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, so Fensa jumped in. What, what, what uh, somebody like Fensa can do is that, uh, you know, Fensa Christ is a media darling here right so when he jumped into this space the media covered that so now that the media is starting to talk about nft more i hope people more people would read about it and maybe would adopt it as well because they see that someone like Benza and he also mentions um a few uh nft artists that are already in the space um, there as well. We have also um, like a performance artist, FJ Kunting, who is also interested in probably minting um, a few of his works. Um, so I think, um, I don't know, this whole thing started from, you know, just a talk on Clubhouse and then suddenly 
right now we have more and more artists coming in uh, experiencing um, how what what it feels to be not only tokenize or minting their works and then maybe uh, earning some money because it's it's it is also um, I asked them how do you feel when you see coming in when when you see money coming into your wallet and then how do you feel when you can afford to buy other people other artists um, works you know how do you feel becoming a collector yourself um, it is something that um, most of them said wow I have never felt anything like this before I think that's that's why it's it be, it, it could become something very addictive <laughs> yes <it's true. laughs> especially when you're collecting on on, on, on Tesla's uh, marketplace because everything is is um, well cheaper but it it I think it, it suits our country because our the living because of the difference in you know living costs right we um, Indonesia or countries in uh, the Western world is different. Um, I know that people, um, I know a lot of them talk about like, wh why, why do you sell your artworks on Tesla's platform? I mean, it's so cheap, you know? And then I said, you know, there are so many countries in this world that uh, who, whose living costs are not as high as yours, like Brazil, Indonesia, um, these artists, uh, felt that NFT finally helped, actually helped them. We're not talking about very popular artists, okay? Because artists, there, there are like thousands, hundreds and thousands of artists around the world. And they feel like, oh, wow, finally, you know, cool. this is a solution to my problem. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, another, I think another very interesting issue in collecting NFT artworks is also how to display, right? I mean, Betty must have much more NFT artwork in her collection than me. And uh, I have never thought that it could change how I see an artwork based on the display. When I bought my first NFT and I was asking like, how should I display it in my office, right? And then I suddenly realized that it is not right to have it in a television set because I show my video art in a continuously running television. Just plug in the USB and then you can see it. But it doesn't work with NFT and it doesn't also work with a projection onto the wall with the normal multi multimedia projection, right? So after experimenting with different yeah terms or way of uh spectatorship i would say yeah i find out it suit best in showing it in a tablet or an ipad or i do it in the office with a, a normal smartphone i just buy a yeah a smartphone and show the image on the smartphone because it is so small compared to other contemporary artwork use on the size, it produced a very interesting contrast, right? So, and that's uh, actually something that makes me joy. What I would never do is actually to print out, I don't know whether Nat Daddy agree with me or not, to print out the NFT on paper or even worse on canvas, right? Because I think the aura gets, uh, yeah, is a, uh, uh what is it it's gone by printing out an nft artworks yeah i would say uh, that's another nice experience in collecting uh, nft but what disturbed me the most and why nft art has got a negative touch for serious art people or art enthusiasts in the world is most of the discussions about NFT is always commercial issue. And a few writings also can be found about the artistic value of NFT artworks. And that disturbs me so much, right? So people talk so much about people 
69 million point three and so on and always about us dollar how to make money and what i mean and this and that and then the artistic side is neglected to the fullest right uh, as an i mean uh, as a serious collector like me uh, i mean i am watching that the younger or the very young generation of uh, collectors especially they are in the tech industry they have another uh, understanding about the artistic or the aesthetic definitions maybe what i find interesting visually for an artwork is not interesting for that generation i'm very open-minded to find out whether there will be a shift in understanding the artistic practice that's why for about 10 minutes ago we talked about probably the contemporary art has ended because of that right so and uh, as a uh, nft art collectors i cannot use my assisting uh, definitions of contemporary art and practice it in collecting nft art that would be a horrible nft art collection right so this is actually a serious uh, risk or danger for an existing uh, contemporary art collector to start collecting nft and we know in the art history that people who were or let's say art galleries who were very successful selling modern art they couldn't sell contemporary art except leo castelli he was a legend he was the only exception other has fa have failed right so uh, this is also a, a question for me am i able to collect or to build a good nft art collection because i was so into the issue of contemporary art that is actually what i have to be aware of as a collector yeah okay so uh yeah it's uh it's, this is a something that we should think about it so it's like it's, it's nice to to discuss something like that so people can have a another point of view uh so uh, but before i jump to you daddy about the ecosystem that you want to explain what is interesting experience and so on that you already explained a bit but you want to explain more uh is uh, do you do you have in your mind like uh, who's the the artist we don't talk about nft artists or uh, uh, nft artwork only but because it's if uh as a indonesian who live in switzerland so i don't find like a many name in a in a in a europe especially uh indonesian artists who interested within art science technology or they call me the art so um the, the the name that i found is like jumpet or ikonukroho so and some name that already i saw in a view collection a long time ago actually so it's not something new so i mean probably i miss something that i didn't know that you know because you are maybe more active in indonesian art community also so do you do you find one or some name that probably we can highlight and we uh because this this uh, uh symposium or this is this talk will will access by many a uh, partner or like 80 partner of ars electronica so people will probably interested to know uh, some artists from Indonesia through you. So please uh, like uh, uh, sh share the name <laughs> that you know, uh, that you think will be shaking the artwork of, I mean, international artwork or something like that or potential things or whatever. So, okay. Um, okay. 
I have to say though, until now, there hasn't, I haven't seen uh, new names uh, showing up after those names that you mentioned earlier, um, like, uh, well, media artists, especially in NFT space. There is one person that I'm uh, paying attention to because his works is like, he, um, he might go into AI soon. Um, that's practically a digital native. Also because oh, yeah. what, yeah, because what he's done is um, it's, at first I thought it was like, what is, what is this that he's, he's making, right? Um, it's, um, so what he's creating visually, what he's creating is like um, furnitures that look like scorpions. Uh, apparently those furnitures are meant to be uh, put on the central land. So the central, there, there are a few um, now spaces in the digital world, basically the central land on cyber where, we, where they have this uh, like an online gallery, but it's not like it's not like a website or something. It's like it's something that you can actually walk in if you're say if you're wearing certain devices. At first, I didn't I didn't even recognize what 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 it was that he was making. But apparently, a few people from out from from outside of Indonesia recognized it. Like you are actually making something to be put in my house in the central land. Okay. So, um, so yeah, this, this, um, his name is Toby Buntaran. Mm -hmm. He's based in Jogja. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's him. He's, he's um, quite young, practically unknown, I think, uh, in, in our art scene, because there's, a, there's quite a few Indonesian artists that's, mm -hmm. that's very popular in, in NFT space, but most of them are illustrators. Yes. Right. Okay, so, see. yeah, what 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 Toby is making is something because he, he is actually making something for the digital world. It's only you know like chairs or furnitures or something that you can use oh. when you're in the central land, for example. Wow. So that's that's interesting. Um, uh, a, a few few names. Um, few old names, Fensa Christ is also doing something uh, uh, specifically for NFT. Uh, I'm actually pushing a few artists that's open to, you know, that welcomes exploration basically to, you know, create something um, on the blockchain. We're gonna see some new type of artists, right? Coders, programmers, because these people can do can do things with codes and blockchains are just that you know it's like codes so in the future i think that's what we're gonna see okay. but in indonesia right now yeah unfortunately there are not many people <laughs> that's um that's in that level yet yeah but soon yeah. okay. i just need some you know some some yeah. people to push them <laughs> yes okay we can do it <laughs> yeah to think outside the box because yeah, yeah. you know to be able to, ex to 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 explore this new technology you need to understand how it works right yeah. and that's yeah. that's the first thing that they need to yeah do to understand what it is yeah so we i'm so curious what you're thinking because uh, in the uh, before the recording we talk about like what is your thinking i mean i love to talk with you because we always have like beyond thinking people and that's why we when we have a meeting with our people a long time ago remember so uh, the, the the story is going uh, i mean we sing so well with the arts people because we also think similar thing. Although remember this, we are still embryo, the MAG, and they invite us and I say like, 
really you invite us? <laughs> I thought it's just a coffee in a cafeteria. No, they prepare really prepare, girl. They yeah. they treat us really good, and oh, I'm so I mean uh, honored to be there with, also with you. So, what is in your mind, with you? I'm so curious. What what happened? Uh, you think like for Indonesian artists for um, global scene in in new media art actually? Yeah, yeah. First of all, uh, I still remember. We, we were welcomed by the Ars Electronica team so nicely. It was an amazing hospitality that we got in Ars Electronica that, back then, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, yeah Mona, uh, I fully agree with that team. We are uh, we're gonna see an amazing art world with young NFT artists producing art beyond our imagination. I think as a collector, we don't have that capability to think what, what will come. Yeah. So uh, it will be certainly amazing artworks coming in the NFT art world. Yeah. That's why I think it is a pity that the NFT art has got a, a negative touch because so many, too many people talk about the yeah, commercial Brilliant. value. Yeah. Brilliant. But yeah, uh, I, would, I would like to maybe see, uh, to talk with you about the future beside the NFT, right? I'm so uh, mm -hmm. still very interested in NFT, but uh, I would say the NFT art still belong to the uh, digital art sphere so we uh, we i think a lot of people already realize now that we are living in a digital era digital is ubiquitous and people start talking about collecting digital artwork which i did already a long time ago and little people know is that actually our world will change dramatically in the very near future. A change that is that will be more uh, tragical than the invention of computer, of the digital technology. I'm talking about the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology. We know that uh, the human gene, genome has been encoded uh, a long time ago, uh, early in the 2000s, right? And people already know this double helix structure of the genome, which uh, element is responsible for which part of the human body. And by, with the invention of gene editing, uh, CRISPR-Cas9, the inventors, uh, the two female scientists uh, has got a, a Nobel Prize last year in 2020 because the gene editing technology is so simple to be done that a lot of labs in the world can do it. And we are talking not, not a dream anymore that a human embryo, when people get pregnant, they can go to the lab and get a menu like in the restaurant and order, I want my kid, my baby, to have blue eyes, blonde hair, thin, tall, dark skin, and whatever. And maybe if the parents are uh, piano players, then they want the kids to have seven fingers because the <laughs> Remy Faso is seven. Why should we have five? Then if you have seven, we will be able to play piano better, right? If uh, I would be a weightlifter in Olympia, uh, I am an Olympia champion. I want my kids to be champion also. I will produce, I ordered my kid to have a very strong muscle in the hand and in the, uh, on the leg, right? So this kind of human being, uh, genetically engineered, is, they are coming soon in our reality with the <coughs> CRISPR-Cas9 technology. And uh, this is a reality already 
not a dream a dream is a protein a, what is it called a science Pro, proteomics is a science of protein right so but the gene technology crispr cas9 that is something already at the front door already that's we are now living in a scientific technological era yeah as a collector i have to concentrate collecting artworks dealing with science and technology this is the reason why i collect dna artwork by eduardo Koch, yes. right so by doing engineering of uh, flowers mm -hmm. and etc and uh, i was very lucky that I could sit on the same podium as speakers with Eduardo Kack in Ars Electronica back then when we were in when we were in Linz in Austria, right? So this kind of artworks fascinates me because I think this is the zeitgeist, the spirit of our time. Beside NFT, of course, right? So I, I would not say that I mean I'm I would not collect only NFT after knowing that we are not living in a digital era anymore. Is that NFT things like, uh, because the future, like uh, what MRK21 doing is like we highlight the, our spice like herbs, jamu and uh, uh, sambal. So we back to, to the zero things like we talk about humanity, but uh, science, society and ecology, what we will do for, for culture action of our era of this situation as a as a human being is an art enthusiast as a curator as a collector whoever who what we will do so and the question is like do, do you what do you think about like like this world related with our topics like uh, i know that the the the, the world itself is, will not stop although the pandemic and everything so but uh i would like to ask uh, in your perspective who like indonesian like what we discuss actually i don't know it's not a basic information anymore <laughs> so <laughs> it's like the information for people who already in this uh media art world or digital art world but i would like probably like a lot of uh, friends from Indonesia who doesn't have basic knowledge like we you, like you. So um, any any tips, any um, uh, what you call uh, opinion that probably can uh, can be the bridging uh, knowledge uh, between between because the the reason we remember when we talked the first time like why we create or we organize media art globally festival because we want to fill the gap at least so people who doesn't know about media art and people who really know uh, have the preaching at least to we fill the gap we don't want to be ambitious to do like changing the world <laughs> uh, yet <laughs> but at least we fill the gap so the, this is very important for me to to end up the the conversation that we have as is getting interesting and getting bigger with you <laughs> so i want to dragging again like to how we can uh, support or have a uh, share information knowledge or whatever that we can help to them because that they already started with the ecosystem like uh, uh, people call you rector right? ibu rector right? in indonesia because you <laughs> teach a lot of things and we also very famous with the collector he new media art one of the uh, the person who people will track you or run to you to to get information about new media art in Southeast Asia especially so I would like to have some sentence from you guys about about my class station so okay well I mean I, I talk about this with um a lot of people that asked me about NFT because they thought it's going to be oh, all this technology talk and all these terms. No, I see it as, look, this 
what this technology offers or does is actually um, giving you a solution to a problem, right? To a certain type of problem. A problem that us human beings, humans have. So it's, it's actually a very basic thing. It's about, you know, um, uh, say, for example, what we can do that about changing the world thing. Maybe not now, but maybe it's going to happen in the future when uh, the generations uh, after us could see how it was before or how things became, right? So certificates, for example, because the blockchain, the NFT is actually that it's a certificate of authenticity. For example, what we have, we have a lot of um, sounds that is uh, uniquely Indonesian, maybe. Sambal that is very unique to Indonesians. Um, if we have all of those information on the blockchain, even after we die, generations after us can still see that and still have access to that. Um, I think the uh, have, um, having this very um, basic understanding first about what the technology does is important. There are so many things we can do with it. Um, I know that I've talked to a few artists that um, worked on, I think they're dancers, um, traditional dancers. Uh, we talked about what they can do as well uh, with NFT regarding that. And I, I heard about you talking <laughs> about Samba and everything. There's, there's so many things that we, we can do because at the end of the day, it, it is just a solution to a problem, right? So that's just how I see it. No, it's not, it's not that, it's not difficult. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. It's just that the terminologies are new. Yeah. But how it works is, is based on how us human beings um, function. Yeah. Totally. So that's how I think. Yeah. So Wiyu, what is your last word? <laughs> <laughs> my last word. Is, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, for now. <laughs> first of, first of last all, now you, uh, first of like all, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to uh, to congratulate Mona for bringing uh, Media Art Globale into the stage. Uh, she started not long ago with MAG, uh, and suddenly. Uh, you start as Electronica in Indonesia. That is uh, a performance, uh, something uh, I'm very happy about it, right? Because of you too. <laughs> yeah. So, and I see also uh, uh, the NFT has created a new roles for collectors like Detty. Detty share her knowledge with creative people yeah, she started or she's doing a sharing session and teaching them uh, how to mint artworks in an NFT platform and <clears throat> something that may be uh, the normal, uh, I mean, normal artists, not normal artists, <laughs> the conventional, traditional artist doesn't have the chance to, to learn that fast. So after uh, two hours, that they told, told us, right? After two hours, they will be able to mend their artworks and they will give them a confidence in their life to be not left behind. We know, right? And that since the invention of computer, a lot of people in the world, they hate the reality because they feel like they are left behind the speed of technological change is that fast that not a lot of people can cope with it. Yeah. And that's the reason uh, why they run away to the hawks because they don't like their reality, right? So, so and this uh, invention of 
NFT creates uh, another social uh, fascination for the art world, not just not just the art world itself, but uh, beyond, like that he already told us, right? So that is actually the fascinating, uh, fascinating part of uh, being a collectors of NFT, among others. Okay. Yeah. And so because of that, we are sitting tonight together <laughs> with Mona and Deti and discussing about this interesting topic. I think uh, what you do, what both of you do in your ecosystem, we you with your uh, ecosystem, Deti with your ecosystem, I think this is the key, I think. Uh, not the technology itself only, but how you put one, uh, allow yourself to share your knowledge, share your minds or everything that you have to support society. I think that's the key to, to make Indonesian artists, Indonesian artwork, Indonesian known everywhere. So thank you for your time. Thank you for everything. And I do hope this is not the last time. So, and so. Thank you. I will close the recording. So thank you, everyone. And I wish wow. you to enjoy the, our conversation. If you have any question, you can follow our Instagram. So, <laughs> so thank, thank you, Mona.